All right, so what happens is we're going to talk about, like I said, 6 1. We're going to, this section's all, or this chapter's all about polygons. Um, so we'll do a lot. There's a lot of definitions that we've got to cover today. Um, I don't know how far we'll get with the, with the two hour delay schedule and all that kind of stuff, but try to move as far as we can through today and then hopefully wrap it up tomorrow. Um, hopefully, maybe we're here for the full day tomorrow. Um, we we'll get some, something done. But. 6-1 is the polygon angle sum theorem. So like I said, most of this that we talk about today is going to be uh, vocabulary uh, kind of orientated. Um, make sure that you know, we're only going to introduce these vocab words one time. We're going to then continually use them. So if you don't learn them right away, uh, within the next day or so, you're going to struggle with a lot of things that we talk about. Okay? Um, just by definition, polygon doesn't really have a great definition. Poly uh, means many, if you're in any history class, you talk about polytheistic people, right? Okay, or polytheism uh, means the belief in many gods, right? So poly is that many. Whenever you see the word poly or the prefix poly, it's talking about many, okay? Um, gone means angles, okay? It's, uh, I believe, Greek, okay? So <clears throat> polygon means many angles, and that's, that's kind of what any definition that you see uh, for a polygon um, is going to say it's just going to be a figure that has many angles. Uh, there might be some attachments in the definitions that say basically those four bullets there. Okay, uh, and we'll talk about those four bullets, but those are criteria that need to be met for polygons to exist. Okay, it allows us to classify things as polygons or not polygons. The first one says each segment intersects exactly, keyword here, exactly, okay, two other segments. So, what that does for us, if we have that shape right there, okay, that is considered a polygon, because if I look at segment AB, it intersects two other segments. It's an intersect segment BC and segment AB. And if I look at BC, it does the same thing. It intersects two segments A, B, and C, D. And I can go through every segment and find out that every single segment intersects two other segments. Okay? What that bullet provides us or inhibits from happening is this idea where this thing could get twisted on itself. And if it gets twisted on itself, it would look kind of like that. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. How many... How many segments does that one right there intersect? D to A. How many other segments does it intersect? Two, right? Do you agree it intersects this one here, D to C, and intersects A to B, right? So just looking at that segment, so far it's classified as a polygon. If I look at B, C, it intersects exactly two other segments. It intersects this one here, C to D, and it intersects B to A. So based on that segment, this thing's a polygon. But once I look at this segment there, how many segments does that one intersect? Three, right? It intersects AD, and it intersects BC, but it also intersects AB there in the middle. Okay? So that violates that criteria uh, and classifies that as not a polygon. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Um, if you were to think about like making this thing out of like wire, Okay, make your polygon out of wire or a coat hanger or something like that. Uh, it basically inhibits you from being able to twist it. Okay, twist it on top of itself. Um, so that is not a polygon. Another criteria is that there can be no curves. Absolutely no curves. So there are no circular portions uh, to a polygon. Okay, everything is either uh, just a rigid segment. Okay, all, all sides are segments. Cannot be curves. Okay or arcs. <clears throat> All segments are coplanar. Okay, so let's talk about that one because this one's one that's hard to visualize sometimes. Let's go. Okay, that would be a polygon because we see that 
every part of it is in that gray plane, right? Okay. Now if I did this, That thing is no longer coplanar. Do you see how part of it comes off that gray plane? Okay. Um, even if, let's see here. I think putting that out there would eliminate the potential of this thing kind of overlapping or twisting on itself. Um, so we do have the criteria there that there are no curves. We have intersection. Uh, every segment intersects two other segments exactly twice. Um, no curves, we call it, it, it ends up being what we call a closed uh, figure, but we do not have the fact that all uh, segments are coplanar. So that would not be a polygon. Um, the last one says the figure must be closed. And, and what that means, it, it's a very important geometric concept. Uh, all closed means is that if you were to kind of set this thing up, make your polygon like a fence. Could I put an animal in here and will that animal ever be able to get out? No. Okay. But if if we look at something like this, sorry. Okay. If that's my fence, okay. Put an animal in there, can the animal get out? Yeah. yeah. So that's not close. Okay. So every polygon is going to have those four characteristics, four pieces of criteria that we need to make sure we understand. Okay. Because they're going to ask you to classify things. They're going to ask you to figure out uh, information about polygons. Well, the first thing I have to do is look at the shape that I'm dealing with and determine is it a polygon first. Because if it's not a polygon, then there's no use in going through all the stuff that we're about to talk about. Okay. Um, but once we've determined that the figure is indeed one of those, okay, so there's a couple examples of things on the left, okay, when it, when it turns yellow, that means it was closed, okay, it means nothing none of that yellow stuff could get out. Um, the things on the left meet those four uh, conditions. The things on the left, or sorry, on the right, uh, violate one of those. If we look at the, uh, the yellow one on the right, that one has a curve in it, right, so that's a violation. Uh, the Y on the right-hand side, that is a... Um, does not have an interior, so it, it kind of lacks the closed part, okay? Uh, so it's not a polygon. Uh, the one on the bottom left there uh, is not closed, okay? You put something in there, it's going to get out, right? Yep. And the one on the right, bottom right, uh, there are two segments there that intersect three other segments instead of two others, okay? It folds over on itself. Um, so those are, those are things that we want to be able to recognize and um, <clears throat> helps us decide you know, some characteristics, some relationships that uh, we're going to define here eventually uh, that we can use for the, the figures on the left. Now, once we've classified something as a polygon, okay, so that's kind of the, the overarching um, kind of shape that we're going to deal with. Now we're going to develop some subgroups, okay? One of those subgroups is called a convex polygon, okay? Uh, and these are the polygons that, generally speaking, we like these better than their alternative, okay? Uh, so a lot of the stuff that we learn and we work through in this chapter and then uh, where this stuff is used in other chapters, we're going to predominantly use convex polygons and work with convex polygons. Uh, not saying the other type won't show up, uh, but these are the ones that uh, we have a lot more uh, uniform, uh, consistent formulas and stuff like that to, to provide us information. A convex polygon, by definition, is really not the, the most kind of... Uh, I don't know, visual definition, really easy to recognize, uh, but it does a great job in classifying these polygons and making sure that these are the only types of polygons that get listed underneath the, uh, the definition of convex. It's a polygon such that no line contain a side. No line contain a side. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at all sides of our polygon and we're going to look at the lines that create those sides. Okay? And what we were interested in is no line containing the side of the polygon 
contains a point in the interior of the polygon. If that is maintained, okay, then we have a convex polygon. And it says such that no line contain a side. So if I've got four sides, then there's four lines I have to look at. And that has to be met for all four lines. If I've got five sides, there's going to be five lines that you have to look at. And that information has to be met for all five lines. Does that make sense? Okay. And it might, you might go through and say, okay, I've got maybe six sides of a polygon. Uh, and I go through and I find out, you know, four of these uh, lines are meeting this condition. But the fifth and sixth might fail it. And if the fifth and sixth fail it, then it's not convex. Okay. So the idea that we're going to try to do, the first determine whether the polygon is convex or not, is we're going to take, let me see here, let me just draw a polygon. And let me go back to two dimensions. All right, so you're going to take a line that contains a side of the polygon. So I'm going to take AB. That's a side, right? Yeah. So I'm going to construct the line A to B. Okay, and I'm going to pass that line all the way through. Now the idea is to visually look at that and say, do any of the red points lie on the interior of my polygon? And they don't, right? Okay, the interior of the polygon is that uh, maroon color, right? So, so far, looking at that line, that segment, this so far meets the condition of being convex. But to be fully convex, we have to check this for every one of these uh, segments. So I'm going to do the same thing then from C to B and make sure that do any of those blue points overlap on the interior? And they don't, right? So then I want to go through and do the exact same thing for... B to C, or sorry, D to C, and none of those red points lie on the inside. Then I'm going to do the same thing for um, let's see, D to E. Do any of those points on that line lie on the inside? Nope. And then I do the same thing for E to A, and none of those lie on the inside. Okay? So every single point that was created by constructing the lines that contain a side, none of those lines had points that were passing through the interior. So that shape is convex. And what's nice is once we determine that, there's a lot of neat relationships that exist for convex polygons. One of those neat relationships that is it's very useful to us is this idea. If I look at all of these angles, Each one of those angles, get these axes back out of there. When you have a convex polygon, each one of those interior angles is going to be less than 180 degrees, which is really good for us because that's what we've talked about so far, right? When we deal with angles, we want them to be between 0 and 180 degrees. That exists in convex polygons, okay? Now, if it's not convex, it's going to look something like this. Okay. So that is a non-convex polygon. I'll talk about how we name that. Um, but what we want to do is we want to go through and see if we violate the definition of being convex. So I look at that line right there. And that line does not violate the definition. Does that make sense? So just by looking at that line so far, it is classified as convex. I need to look at this one. OK? That one does not violate the definition. That one does not violate the definition, right? Does that one. Color it. Does that red one violate the definition of being convex? Yes. Yes. There's a region in, on that line that passes through the interior, right? 
And if you have a convex polygon, you're going to have at least two sides that do that. Okay? If I look at the line B to C, that will also pass through the interior. Okay? Now, if it's not convex, does anybody know the name of something that's not convex? A square. No, nope. square is convex, actually. It's concave. Okay? Concave. The way I remember concave is if, if I move this point out, it's now convex, right? Okay. If I, if even though I start there, it's concave, or sorry, convex. But once I push this in, once I punch it in, once I cave it in, it's concave. Does that make sense? Okay. Tyler's punching his hand, right? So if, I, if I'm going to punch Tyler in the face, I'm going to try to cave his face in, right? I wouldn't do that, Tyler. I'm not strong enough. Okay. But whenever you try to push something in, when it, uh, think about denting your car or whatever. You cave in a panel of your car, right? Okay. It's called concave. You look at a spoon. A spoon has a concave surface. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Um, that's a way to remember the difference between convex and concave. People get those mixed up all the time. All right. Um, now, here's the relationship that is consistent with what we talked about. If, if I look at these angles, if it was all convex, these angles would all be less than 180 degrees, right? Yep. Okay. So those angles so far are all less than 180 degrees, right? 86, I think it's 51, 87, 43. But if I look at that one, that angle is 271 degrees. Okay, that's a problem for us right now. We don't know angles to be bigger than 180, right? Okay, eventually we will, but right now that's an issue. So predominantly speaking in this chapter, we want to talk about convex polygons. Okay, if it's not convex, it's concave. Okay, and the next thing we want to talk about is how we name polygons. Okay. Um, and a lot of things that we talk about in geometry come from uh, like Greek origins. Okay, so some of these names, like a triangle. Okay, sometimes. Uh, well, I'll show you. I'll show you the list here in a little bit. But uh, triangle, quadrilateral. Uh, what comes after quadrilateral? What comes after four? Five. Five, which is <laughs> a pentagon, right? And penta is the. Uh, the cardinal number that the Greeks use for five. Does that make sense? We call it five. They call it in their language penta. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, six is hexa. hexa. Okay, so hexagon. Seven is octagon. Octagon. No, it's heptagon. Eight. Heptagon. Yeah. Heptagon. Uh, sometimes I've seen I've seen I've seen seven called septagon every once in a while. Okay. Um, eight is octa. Okay. Um, Nine, anybody know nine? Um, I've seen it listed as nonagon, but it is in the Greek, the Greeks call it a neagon. Okay. Uh, so here's here's our polygon names. You know, this goes and then there's patterns to it. So I think this goes one to thirty-three, and it goes and this shows the forty, fifty, sixty, so forth. Okay. So we see Three is tri for triangle, right? Four, they call it tetra. You might see it written as tetragon, okay? We know it as quadrilateral. That's just more familiar to us. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, quad meaning four, tetra in Greek means four. Uh, and then you get pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon. Nine is a neagon. Ten, deca, okay, right? That's where we get our deci. Um, and then 11 is a hindeca. 12, you guys have seen dodeca before, right? Okay. Um, but now you see after 12, they get kind of crazy, don't they? Tri sky decagon, tetra chi decagon. Look, there's patterns, right? Yeah. The prefix of whenever it is three, it's tri. When it's four, it's tetra. When it's five, it's penta. Okay. Then within the teens, it goes chi. Okay. So tetra chi, penta chi, and, and then we get the deca part. Okay. Uh, and then we go to 20. Uh, icasa, okay. Maybe you've heard of icosahedrals or icosahedrons. Um, maybe you've seen some of that stuff in uh, 
Can anybody in chemistry guys talk about this stuff? No, okay. we just talked about it last chapter. Okay. Um, not even last chapter, but like two chapters ago, we did, yeah, where you have to do the freaking electron thing, name them. So I don't want to hear it come back to So so we get we get those, and there's a lot of different ways. Like I'm not going to give you a, a homework question that says here's a heptaconta uh, gone, okay? And you know that that's seven, okay? But I will give you one through twelve. All right. If I want anything beyond that, if I want you to know uh, a 26-sided figure, I'm going to say 26 hyphen geodon. 26 gon. Okay. Uh, you can do it for everything. You go. You go three gon. What's a three gon? Three gon. Triangle. Better name is a triangle. Don't call it a three gon, right? Um, so these three, three through twelve. Okay. That is supposed to be like common knowledge. Okay, so any author of, and of course exams, ACT is going to assume that you know one through or three through twelve. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So when we talk about polygons, now that we we can talk about triangles, quadrilaterals, uh, pentagons, heptagons, hexagons, septagons, all that kind of stuff. Okay. We talk about any number size we want. We can take any one of those polygons and now further classify because it might be equilateral. We understand equilateral, right? Lateral means side, equal means equal. Okay, so equal sides. Look at that picture though. Are there equal angles? Do all those, there, there can be, but are all of them equal angles? No. No, okay. If you remember back to a triangle, a triangle is a, is a unique shape. Okay. And, and the fact that when it's equilateral, it is also equilangular. So for triangles, equilateral implied equilangular, and equilangular implied equilateral. And when you had one of them, you had both of them. For polygons in general, that is not a true statement. Okay. So for these, this is a hexagon, right? When you have an equilateral hexagon, it does not mean that it's an equilateral, sorry, equilangular hexagon as well. Okay. So. It, for polygons in general, equilateral does not imply equilangular, and equilangular does not imply equilateral. And we see that here. If we have an equilangular polygon, it does not mean all the sides are the same. It means all the angles are the same, and that's all you know. Does that make sense? Now, some, some polygons, like I said, triangles are special polygon, right? If it's equilateral, then it's also equilangular. If it's equilangular, it's also equilateral. There's a particular quadrilateral. Not all quadrilaterals are this way, but there is a particular quadrilateral where that happens. Square. square. When you have a square, you know it's equilangular, right? Yep. And when it's equilangular, then it's equilateral. Okay. Uh, but, but all quadrilaterals in general don't have that um, relationship. And that's what we're going to dive into in this chapter. And say, okay, we're going to quadrilateral. Which ones are equilangular? Which ones are equilateral? Which ones are both? Okay. Uh, and see if we can classify them and um, deal with them accordingly. All right. So there are some, like you said, a square. That is a quadrilateral that is equilangular and equilateral. So what we could call a square is a regular polygon. Okay. A square is actually, you know, square is the best word that we use for it, but we could call it a regular quadrilateral. Because regular means it has all equal side lengths and all equal angles. Okay? It's kind of a mouthful to say this shape is equilateral and it's equilangular. It's a lot easier to say this shape's regular. And to know that regular means equilateral and equilangular at the same time. Okay? So when you think about stop sign, what's stop sign? What kind of shape is that? Octagon, right? It's a what type of octagon? All sides are the same, all angles are the same, so it's a regular octagon, right? Yep. And, and that's usually when people say octagon, or you think hexagon, or heptagon, or decagon, you're probably in your mind thinking of the regular form of those things. Does that make sense? Okay. But what I want you to understand is that when I say octagon, now let's just, instead of octagon, let's look at that one. Okay. How many sides do I have there? Five. That's a pentagon. Okay. But when you hear the word pentagon, most of you are probably thinking in your mind that shape there, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. 
That is a regular pentagon. Is it okay? If it's not regular, it's irregular. irregular. So the one on the left is an irregular concave pentagon. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So classifying these things is going to be important because when I see written out in words a homework question and it says you're dealing with a convex pentagon, it eliminates the thing on the left up there, right? Yeah. Because that's not convex, that's concave. Okay. But it does not narrow my focus just to this. If it just says convex pentagon, they could be referring to maybe... That thing, does it got five sides? Yeah. Is it convex? Yeah. Yep, but it's not regular, right? It's not equal angular, it's not equal out. Okay. Um, so the, the terminology they use to present information to us is important. We have to understand what all these vocabulary words are referring to. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we, got, we got a minute to talk about diagonals real quick. Uh, a diagonal, hopefully you guys understand what diagonals are. You've dealt with them in the past maybe, but it's a diagonal that is, uh, or a diagonal is a segment that joins two non-consecutive vertices of a polygon. What does the word consecutive mean? Okay. Like, like one, after one after another. So Monday, Tuesday, those are consecutive days, right? Yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, those are consecutive, right? Monday, Friday, no. non-consecutive, right? Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So non-consecutive means you've skipped something in the middle, right? Yeah. Okay, so consecutive vertices mean that you are having vertices that are back to back to one another, okay? One after another. So if I look at, let's just deal with, do a hexagon here. If I deal with that hexagon, let's just look at uh, vertex A. Okay, which vertices would be consecutive to A? F and B. F and B. Those two are right next to A, right? So if those are the two, and I'm just going to let's see if I can just hide them. Those two are consecutive. So the other three that are still remaining are then what? The diagonals. Okay, so those are non-consecutive vertices, and if I connect them with A, we get, by definition, a diagonal. A diagonal. Yep. Okay? So those are the diagonals when we start at A. Now, I could have started at E and found other diagonals. Does that make sense? Yeah, I could have started at C and found other diagonals. When you are looking at diagonals, just start at one vertex and go to the non-consecutive vertices. Don't do it from every vertex. Just do it from one. Does that make sense? So pick one and go. Okay, I picked A. You could pick D and go on. But how many triangles do you get there? Four. Four. How many degrees are there in one triangle? Three. One eighty. One eighty. Okay. So if I've got four triangles up there, each one being 180 degrees, how many degrees are in a hexagon? A lot. Four times 180, so 720. Does that make sense? As we go through, you know, a triangle has 180 degrees. A quadrilateral has 360 degrees. A pentagon has 540 degrees. A hexagon has 720 degrees. Okay? We need to know those things. And I'll give you a formula, we'll, we'll work on it tomorrow, that gets you those things. Okay? Uh, but if I don't understand what a diagonal is, I'm going to struggle doing that. And that formula is only going to work for convex polygons. If it's concave, we have issues. <laughs> yeah.